Welcome in to IllinoisPrep.com. Skyler King alongside Lombard South legend at running back Eric Seals. No, no high school shirt today, Mr. Seals. Yeah, I, I was having a problem finding a plethora of different you know, schools and shirts. Getting those so, custom-made uh, prices. Yeah, so <laughs> may, maybe next year. Anyway, as always, Skyler I Prep, Eric I Prep on Twitter. We were at a big game on Friday night. Mr. Seals was blowing up the Twitter feed. And as always, hit up the Illinois Prep message boards. Let us know what you're thinking. Week one feels good to be in football season, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, it felt real good. It felt real good. It felt especially good on Friday night in Joliet because this was a ball game. And between two teams that are going to make some deep runs in the playoffs, but Joliet keeps the perfect record and Tech has yeah. never lost to Carmel at home. And uh, it was looking, you know, towards the end of the game, it was looking like, you know, Carmel was going to come out with the win, but... Ty Isaac just Randy Moss, folks. You know that day. I mean, he he did. It was like Booby Miles. <laughs> I, I didn't say it right. Booby Miles. You know, he can kick it. He can pass it. He can and catch he can it. Throw. He, and he can throw. <laughs> Eighteen carries, two hundred eleven yards, two touchdowns. Uh, I mean, he was just uh, about, two, about two catches for like ninety five. Yeah, I mean, he was a freak of nature that you know uh, during the game. And uh, Malin Jones, you know, even had a good game. I mean, that Joliet team really just they looked really good but it did look like Carmel was keying on Malin Jones yeah. because it, it j- just seemed like when he got the ball it was three yards in a cloud of dust when Ty Isaac got the ball it you saw those lanes bit. and that's the one thing that I liked about it. I picked Carmel to win um one thing that or two things that I really noticed about Carmel that I like number one gang tackling when you have very talented running backs and that, big running backs big running backs man they were big uh that that Joliet Catholic has you need to have four people on the ball every time so they did that very well um obviously the thing that kind of hurt them is those big plays you know they would uh you know (laughs) i mean 75 yards it would just be ridiculous and so that that's one thing i noticed the other thing that i really liked is even towards the end of the game they were down by a lot they didn't quit yeah they kept going and that's one thing that makes me almost even like them even more from the standpoint uh even if they're down by 14 points you better watch out because they're still going to come after you panico broke that big run that put him up. They yep. converted the two. And the next play from scrimmage was it. And, and I said it. They tried that swing pass earlier ended up out of bounds. Mm-hmm. And I said it, and it happened again. The, the Carmel DB ne- never looked for the ball. No, he and, didn't. And if I, if I was the Joliet Catholic coaching staff, I'd say, we're, we're going back to that. Yeah, and they did. Made an athletic play after that. Made two guys miss. Game over, you know. So it definitely, it, it, we both said, it's probably the best game we'll see all year. Yeah, I, I, realistically, and I tweeted that, I'm like, that is honestly one of the best high school games I've ever seen. It was, it was ridiculous. Ty Isaac, do work. Lions, Stevenson, the Patriots, 19 straight wins in the regular season. But LT, breakout season last year, maybe yep. even bigger things to come this season. You know, we talked about them uh, on the preseason uh, podcast or the, or the first week. Uh, show and we're talking about how they had a slow start last year uh, ended really good last year and now they continue their success uh, took down um, a talented Stevenson team um, Evan Booth uh, from Lions two interceptions four catches for 27 yards um, you know this is a team in the West Suburban Silver yes um, that's trying to you know get up there with Glenbar West and yeah. trying to say we're a team to, to look at too so LT you know watch out for them they're definitely you know they definitely have some weapons on their side yeah and they got a little swagger you know they they, they, they their seniors were, were talking a little bit about what a, what a springboard last year was going to be for them. Mm-hmm. And certainly, considering all the other results in the West Suburban Silver, LT's got, losing. LT's got to have that. they got to be circled for Glumbard West oh, going forward. Now. That's going to be the game to decide that conference. And I think that York game will still be big. I know York well, lost uh, one point. Um, uh, who, uh, the Rolling Meadows. Uh, Rolling Meadows. 50-49. to 49. That's always going to be – that's, that's going to be a and, big match. And they were up – what three they were at three touchdowns yep. late so that you know that, that might be tough to recover from a game you were at mount carmel gets revenge from last year's opening loss you called it what'd you see yeah uh one of the first things that i noticed uh looking at simeon um a lot of drop balls uh robert gregory was putting it out there for his receivers and a lot of a lot of times was just hitting them in the chest and it got to the point where you know I don't know if he stopped trusting his receivers, but he just started running the ball. And, you know, they, they had a little two-minute uh, two minute offense for a while, and they drove it down the field. But Mal Carmel's defense was just um, – they were just all over the place. Franklin, he said it at the end of the game. He was just saying, you know, they're more talented 
uh, or they're more athletic than us. Mm -hmm. So we have to do what we do good. And, you know, they gang tackled. You know, they did their scheme. Um, Brandon Greer, 11 carries, 124 yards. Looking real good. Filling in for Michael Banks. Filling in for Mr. Banks. So uh, Mount Carmel, definitely a, a team to look at. Don Buckus. Um, I, I like the way he ran the team. Mm -hmm. He did good. Um, he, you know, is a hard nosed guy. Passing um, touchdown, right? Passing yeah. touchdown. You know, he, you know, he was running the option for him and everything. So that's definitely a team that's, you know, looking good this year. Yeah, Mount Carmel. You know, normally, normally not that good. Um, <laughs> so the other game that was played later on, but you missed. This was a big one because Providence. The loss to Morgan Park last year yep. was the beginning of a downward spiral that led to a two-win season. They jump out 21-0 in this football game, power running game. You know, Ryan Ward was quoted as saying, you know, that we, we owed him something. Yep. And, and they delivered. Providence looking, uh, you know, starting the year off right, you know, compared to last year. Uh, Jack Kleisick, I believe, uh, for Providence, nine carries, 83 yards, and a touchdown. Um, you know, Providence, you know, we said they were down last year. They're coming in this year, you know, the guys are older, they're more experienced, they're ready to play. Morgan Park, a little down, uh, you know, they lost their coach, uh, lost a couple key players, including their quarterback. So they're a young team right now, uh, a lot of sophomores and juniors. So um, definitely expect them to get better as the season goes on. Uh, but Providence has a, you know, a big one, come, uh, a big game coming up, Manuka, Man Manuka, Manuka yep. uh, coming up next week. So that'll definitely be a big touch for them. But starting off on the right foot. Yeah. The Celtics. And definitely not not a lot of people a big fan no. of, of our of our pick of Providence in the top ten. Nope. But again, what people don't seem to realize is if this team just wins six even if you say they're only gonna win five games, yeah. what what what's the scarier name in the six eight playoffs in Providence? Exactly. You know, uh you know, those teams that are, you know, in a smaller class but they're playing the bigger class teams, yep. the Joliet Catholics, Providence. Those are the teams you got to watch out for. And so if they make it into the 6A playoffs, which we believe they will, uh, I don't care what their record is. You know, it's definitely going to be a team to watch out for. They're going to be one of, if not the favorite. Yes. We'll take a quick break here. When we come back, the final game of the weekend was played today. And it had big time 7A implications. When we come back, we'll talk about it. Derek Seals, I'm Skylar King on IllinoisPrep.com. Welcome back in, IllinoisPrep.com. Eric Seals alongside Skyler King. As always, you can see us on Twitter, Eric I Prep, Skyler I Prep. And Eric, the game that happened today, Wheaton South has had the number of the Glenbard West football team for the last two years. Mm -hmm. But finally, Glenbard West gets over the hump with the defense led by number 10, Mr. Tommy Shutt. Yeah, Tommy Shutt. I mean, he was all over the place. Um, anytime they ran to his side, he was just in every single play. Just it was exciting watching him play. You know, later in the game, unfortunately, uh, he was out. I don't know if it was a cramp or injury, but you know that defense. He leads that defense, and it's going to be um, you know something big that they need to continue to do good at. If, you know, if they're going to have a successful year. Uh, the thing that stuck out in the game though was turnovers. Sloppy. Sloppy. I don't know if that was just the first game because it was the first game. I don't know if it was because it was on ESPN, but. I I know early on a Sunday, early on a Sunday, but I know Coach Hetlett, you know from Glenbar West. I know they're going to be talking about ball security because oh. the ball was just loose; it was on the ground too much, and I think that could have made a bigger difference in the game if Glenbar West didn't have as many turnovers as they did. Right. Um, you know, Wheaton South had a lot of opportunities to you know convert on those, and they and they didn't. Um, but it, it it was what we expected for it. To, you know, you know, it's what we expected to happen. And one of the things that was – Riley O'Toole is not walking through that door. No. You know, the, the quarterback situation in Wheaton South, I'm sure it was a topic of discussion all summer long mm -hmm. for Wheaton South fans to say, what are they going to do to replace Riley O'Toole? You know, there's no way you – there's not going to be an upgrade from Riley O'Toole. No. But – Thing, things look shaky, and the, the confidence might have been shaken towards the end of the game. Coach Ron Buhich, uh, you know, took out the uh, Thaddeus and uh, brought in the sophomore quarterback to, to run the team. And, you know, I think he was even a little shaken, a little worried. And, uh, you know, until you get that leader on the offensive side of the ball, and it has to be the quarterback, it's going to be hard to run your offense. It's going to be hard to run your team. And, and right now, again, maybe because it's the beginning of the year, but right now it's a question for Weaver Morville South. 
Well, and as someone who went through the Wheaton Rams program, there's got to be a, a way different level of continuity if, you know, Thaddeus was with the Wheaton Rams all these years yeah. and was playing quarterback with with this group of kids. Yeah, I, and, and that's the thing. I, I, I know that they do that, um, you know, in the Wheaton Rams and, you know, um, the Pop Warner kind of teams, you know, they – uh, start them with their offense. Right. So by the time they get to high school, they know exactly what they're running, what they're doing. They've been doing it for the last eight years. Um, so that, you know, coming from Ottawa, that's, you know, going to make a big difference. But one thing that we might see with Weed Warrenville South this year is the same thing that happened with Maine South. It's a new team. A lot of people are young. And it might take them the first two or three games. But after that, they might start rolling on guys. You know, uh, Maine South last year lost the first two games, ran the table after that. Weed South is not a program that's going to stay down. Um you know, people think that I had a vendetta against them. No, I just thought that Glenbrow West was going to win. And the DVC with Naperville Central losing, Naperville North losing, we North uh, win and Glenbrow North, you know, their win wasn't as, you know. But it, it looks like it's it's setting up. It, it is set, it's possibly setting up. So, uh, Wheaton South, they're going to get their act together. Uh, Coach Muhich is going to get them, you know, back on the practice field doing what they need to do. So, um, they will get better from this point. It's the first game of the year. All right. So, what? Uh, in, in these five games that we saw, what, what's what's the big takeaway for you? Um, the thing that I was looking at first week, it's hard to judge a team by, uh, you know, the first week. Glenbar West is not going to be fumbling that much. Um, Carmel's going to find a way to take away the big plays from the team teams that plays. Um, Simeon can learn how to catch the ball. That's just coach. That's mental. Yeah. You know, the coach would be like, just catch the ball. That's all mental. It's hit them in the chest. So uh, a, a lot of stuff. Uh, for the first week is just excitement. Um, they're going to come into week two, settle down, play a little bit better. I don't know really how much better Juliet Catholic and Carmel can play because that, that was that was one that was heck good. of a football game. If they play like good. that, I think they're both going to run the table the rest of the year. Yeah. But when we come back, a little overtime, some other thoughts on some of these games and other things we saw around the state. Next time here at IllinoisPrep.com, we'll be previewing week two.